ask the average person what their dreams are or what goals they have, the most common answer is to retire, usually around 65. When you ask that same person why or what they're going to do then, the number one answer is travel. Travel to places they've never been and experience new cultures and languages. But there's only one problem with that answer. I don't know anyone who's actually done that. No one I know has retired and then spent the next 20 or 30 years traveling the world. Think about that. Do you? Richard Williams learned to travel at a very young age. Being an army brat, Richard navigated the ropes of living in new places and meeting new people very early on. And that's probably why he's been to more places around the globe than most people even consider at the age of retirement. And Richard is less than half of the age of the typical retired person. Very little of his travel has been done for work, but he does work everywhere he goes. Richard is the definition of the new rich. He may not have a lot of zeros in his bank account, but he has created a lifestyle that certainly feels that way. A lifestyle of travel and leisure. A lifestyle he designed that works for him. A lifestyle allows him the freedom to experience life, culture, and form bonds with people all around the world, all while making a pretty decent living along the way. Richard demonstrates how with a little forethought, ambition, and creativity, you can have these same amazing opportunities to make your wildest dreams possible. So come join me and find out how you can travel the world, live on a budget, and create a lifestyle that rewards you the way that rolling around the world has rewarded Richard Williams. This episode is dedicated to Josh Wagner, who lost his life doing what he loved. Longtime friend of Richard's, Josh was a great kid, amazing skater, and I'm sure he slid that kink trail on his way up to the pearly gates. Rest in peace, my man. For queuing up audio and video, you got to have a... Uh, some kind of click, some yeah. kind of pop, some kind so of clap. I'm trying to, I want, I want to get the old. Oh. Uh, that's what I want to be. I my, can't do I that. Can't, I still can't do that. It's not, it's not popping right. I can't get it right. So. <laughs> hmm. As soon as I get a pop, we'll start. Yeah, I'll just pop my wrist. There we go. I'll pop my elbow. Ready? Yeah. Uh. Rolling. <laughs> no, just, Dude, that was vicious, man. <laughs> I could do that with my ankle sometimes, but man, that was like on demand. Yeah. This is the Extraordinary Podcast, and my guest today is Richard Williams. What's up, guys? How's it going, man? Good. How's it going, Nate? Outstanding. Outstanding. And thanks, man. This is really, really cool. This is our first official video, hopefully, <laughs> our first official video Let's see how good episode. I do. So we're yeah. going to see how it goes, man. So it's going to be really, it might take me a while to get this one put up. Because take your extra time, man. We ain't got nothing else, but, but it. But man, this is really, really, really exciting for me. Not just because we're doing the video episode, but I've been really looking forward to talking to you for a while. <laughs> we Same were saying here, earlier, I've, I'm, I feel better prepared for this interview than most other interviews I've done just because, um, like I said, you were one of the first ones that kind of inspired me to go down this path. And then once I, I did, with all your travel and everything that you guys have going on, it's really tough to... To yeah, pin you down, but now we schedules. did, and we got a whole evening ahead of us. So, yeah, how you been, man? What you been up to? You just got yeah. back in town. Again. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I've been in town for all of 18 hours. Uh, Coming from uh, New Orleans. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy. I took my parents out to New Orleans for for a weekend, about 48 hours of eating and drinking. And you told me you guys went out there just to go eat. Yeah, eating and drinking, just having a good time. Just yeah, they never hanging been, out with the parents. Know? Yeah, they've never been before. No, nah. oh. of all the places. Yeah. Wow. They've never been to New Orleans. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, we were going to get into that later, but you guys have traveled. You guys grew up traveling all over yeah, the place. Yeah, so, my the parents. they've never been to New Orleans. Yeah, they've wow. driven driven through, you know, take I-10, you know, you're there, you, but they just kept going, you know. So where did you through. take them? What was, the, what was the first place you took them? I just want to drop them right in. It was Friday night, so we uh, we took it to Bourbon Street, you know, because you That's, have to oh, yeah, at least gotta, see it. As trashy and as uh, played <laughs> out as it is, if you've done it more than one time, you already know. But, um, yeah, they never been to Bourbon Street, so I took them there. We did nice. that whole thing. Hurricanes, Excellent. you know, the, the grenades, <laughs> the whole thing. My dad barely made it. I was yeah. going to say, how did that – usually <laughs> that first night of New Orleans, historically for me, is a little painful until you get settled in. You get oh, a little yeah. ahead of yourself and mm-hmm. kind of ease your way We had a little hotel lifestyle. room, had uh, no windows. 
but I wasn't mad at it because you sleep <laughs> real good. Because you want that darkness. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you casino want it in there. Pitch yeah. black till yes, at least sir. noon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For recovery purposes. Well, that's great. I'm glad you guys had a good time. What was their favorite part of the trip? Anything Man. particular? Well, see, my mom, she's a foodie, much like myself, so uh, she really enjoyed the muffaletta. That's an Italian sandwich. Yeah. Um, you know that that originated from there. We went to Central Grocery. That is the yeah. birthplace of it. You uh-huh. know, right over I there by the French said. Market. So, yeah. Um, I got this funny clip too, like. Uh, she got the sandwich. She was like, all right, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. She went to the bathroom. I took a bite out of it and wrapped it back up. Came back out, and she was like, uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and bite into this. So she opens it up, and there was a bite in it. She was big <laughs> mad. Yeah. But, hey, you know, you only got one time to screw it up, and I did it. I did it big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long did it take her to figure out it was you? <laughs> uh, all of half a second, but yeah. the look of confusion on her face was priceless. That's great. That's great. Yeah. It's great to uh, spend time with the folks as we get a little bit older. Yeah, man. You got to you know, take advantage of it. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Your dad was in the military? Yeah, my mom and dad, both Air Force, over 20 years. No kidding. Retired. So tell yeah. me some of the places you Gosh. grew up. Uh, man, the list goes long. Korea, Japan, San Antonio, Fort Meade. Oh gosh, the list the list is long. Yeah, but they ended up here in in Atlanta. Retired. Did you have a particular spot that you was your favorite growing up? Man, yeah. it's Atlanta for me. Yeah, and that's what I've noticed. Traveling a lot has made me uh, realize that Atlanta's got it going on as far as a home base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Well, mm-hmm. and it works great as kind of a hub. I yeah, mean, buddy. Not look, just for fifteen trans- minutes down the street. There's the airport right yeah. there. Yeah. And then you can get anywhere you need to from mm-hmm. there. And you've got to go a lot of amazing places as an adult, too. I I'm mean, trying that, to that's, keep the list going, yeah. That's what I was most impressed in and what first drew me to want to have you for this interview is all the different places you've got to travel. Oh, man. Um, what, what was your favorite place as an adult? Do, as an adult, different? currently, it's got to be the Netherlands, Holland, yeah. Amsterdam area. I'm I'm kind of done with Amsterdam. Not, yeah. not hating on Amsterdam. It's just I'm hating on the tourists that go to Amsterdam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have to deal with that whole scene. Well, and that brings us to how you travel and how you travel as a millennial. I kind of think of compared to how I think of travel and the way that you've kind of evolved and become just a seasoned traveler oh, and, and how you go about. You're like, too kind to call me well, a seasoned traveler. But, but, but yeah. it's true, though. I mean, if you think about it, the way that you. First of all, the deals that you get to travel. I mean, some oh of the man, deals but that's that shout out to able. Clark Howard, boy. Yeah, Clark Howard, self-made millionaire. He's just out here. Self-made well, you know, you know he's on my list. I'll, oh I'll man, get, Clark, I mean, you gotta, gotta come I'll over here and talk to my boy him, Nate. Please come yeah. talk to him. Come yeah, talk please. to him. Please, yeah. seriously. Everything from just like you know finding the good deals to allow you the opportunity to do it economically, and then what I think is really neat is the way that the Blader community has kind of you kind of have your own. Little Airbnb experience. Of course, you know you it's a, the blading world is so tight knit and so just welcoming. If you skate, it doesn't matter what level of skating you are. You know, you could be a beginner. You could have just bought a pair of skates yesterday. You just go online, find some folks in different places, and you're like, "Yo, I skate. You skate? Yeah, we skate. Hey, I'm coming to your area." You got a free couch. You know, like you want to chill. You want to go eat. You want to show me around your town, and. Nine times, nine and a half times out of ten, if the availability is there, yeah, you're there. So cool. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because um, when Kurt and Grayson were in town last weekend, yeah, it was the same kind of thing. Like they came in, and Kurt had to bail out. Literally, I mean, he was here for almost exactly 24 hours. Oh man, I know. And he that had feeling. to go, and, and Grayson was still here yeah. for a couple of days, and he just gave Grayson my number and <laughs> hit me up. Want to go skate? Yeah, Grayson's so I dope too, man. I went Shout out. Picked him up. Tougher. We brought him up to double. Well, yeah, you met us yeah, up at Duncan uh-huh. Creek. So that's how it all. I got a pair of wheels right back thing. there. I ain't put them on my setup yet, but um, yeah, those stay tuned. wheels are fantastic. I heard, yeah, the black urethane. I'm always a fan of that. Yeah. They, they found it. They found a good product there. Oh yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, I love that about the whole international blading community because yeah. you see that not just in the U.S. but you see it over there as well. And really, I think it kind of started over there with the winter class. Winter you know, class. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank out you. There in Holland, so, I, mean, uh, I think you know, like having events like that where you've got. You know, yeah, the huge and, and, and influx. And having to dude, do winter class was nuts. If you haven't been and you are a roll bitter, 
got to make it out there. I barely even skated. It was just the energy, the sheer energy of people out there. Just thousands of people who are sharing the same love for the, sh- the same sport, you know, so it's... Uh, well, and it's good to see such a huge scene, too, like, I mean, because you haven't far seen and that wide. in yeah. the U.S. for a while. So it's like yeah. when it, to have that still... Once going strong big. man yeah it's on tv out there you know like you see nice. not 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 the winter class per se maybe it's in like local news out in holland but um you see blading on tv which is really cool yeah that is cool shout yeah. out pascal tan shout out yaro frying both of y'all what's up hey nice <laughs> excellent excellent what's the toughest thing about international travel compared to domestic since i haven't really done much of that man um layovers Layovers, you know, maximizing your time. If you have layovers, you have a lot yeah, of downtime. You have a lot of downtime. You figure out what to do in your downtime, and it makes it so much easier. Generally, I just pop on my laptop and start editing something. You know, right. Start so chopping something, get a little creative, creative to get you know? That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Excellent. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about traveling international compared to uh, <laughs> domestic? Oh, man. Different air, different customs. Different people. What do you mean different by different air? Different air. Gosh, like there's something about going to a different country and just immediately getting out of the airport and smelling what the country smells like. Take El Salvador, for example. You get out there, it smells like jungle. Right, right. It, it smells like, like seriously, jungle, mm-hmm. hot, dense, humid jungle. You know, you land in London and it is just, you, you smell urban. Not uh-huh. not like dirty dirty urban or anything. You just smell like this city's been there a while. But each place kind of has its own yes. unique little scent. Yes, That's for sure. Cool. You know, you touch down in Taiwan and it smelled like stinky tofu right off the rip. <laughs> I will not <laughs> right out to of the this gate. day ever <laughs> do stinky tofu. <laughs> That's I didn't great. eat it. No, and I That's won't. Great. I won't ever eat stinky tofu. That stuff sucks. Uh, uh. Too fun. Well, and that's cool because that's something that you don't experience or get to kind of wrap your head around when you're watching a TV show about travel or reading a book about travel or whatever. Like that, that all those senses are yeah. enacted. That mm-hmm. and sense of smell. I never even. That's a great. That's, that's a great huge, aspect. dude. And yeah, you know, people that. who take tours on the double decker buses or you know like car tours or whatever it may be nah what you need to do is literally just walk or, or skate slap on a pair of oh, skates yeah slap yeah. on some skates you know get on a bike uh, when we were out there in new orleans with my parents we hooked up with uh free will and bike tours they're the number one bike tour rental company in new orleans and they know so much they take you through whatever neighborhood you want nice. to go through the cbd the business district they take you through the French Quarter, you know, wherever you want to be, and they know everything. And they're not bullshitting either. Right. Like, they know they're, it. They know it all. Up. Shout out to them, man. That's awesome. Free Will and Bike Tours. Yeah. We'll have to, I'll throw a link up for them as well. Yeah, for That's sure. Great. Awesome. What's your favorite place that you've uh, traveled domestically? Within the States. Yeah. I'm going to go with San Diego. I was going to say probably Southern California, yeah, right? Yeah, San Diego, man. There's something about it. The air, the, the folks are just happy. You know, you got perfect weather all the time. Yeah. yeah, that's the, um, the, that's food, one of the main uh, stomping grounds for triathlon. Yep. You got the of... $5 burritos that are as big as your head. Oh, like, yeah. Right I, off I'm the all rip. about the fish tacos myself. Oh, all, yeah. All, all Boy, about that. Baja yeah. grilled fish. Those, yes. Those yes. Baja fish tacos. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, you can't go yep. wrong with that. Especially yep. if you can get right there on the beach. Kind of thing. On the beach? Yeah. Boy. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> but I tell you what, though, as much as I love it down there, <laughs> I, I, and it's, even though the weather is perfect, Too I expensive. don't think I could live there. Too expensive. Earthquakes, no thank you. Before there's well, California's no earth just kind of weird too, man. That it, it's it's its own little I yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's a different scene for it sure. Got about a week out there. Yeah. Well, about a week anywhere before I'm like I kind of miss home. Yeah, sure, sure. I get that. Is mm-hmm. that generally the kind of time frame? It's that one week mark is when you start to feel it. Uh, yeah, for the most part, unless it's something that I'm just supercharged about. And um, let's shift gears a little bit. You've had to travel quite a bit for work as well. Let's yeah. talk about what you do. Man, um, I've been blessed to be in a position where I make video content. I write uh, a good bit too, you know, about traveling, about, you know, new car drops, you know, resorts, hotels, just whatever is new, whatever's cool, whatever's popping. The site is uh it's stupiddope.com. Been with them for I've been with them for a little bit. Now uh, you could mm-hmm. say that. Just but, a minute. Yeah, just two. just a minute, just a minute or two, but they've been a, you know, a good starting block to to the future of things. Well, and, and the content that you guys have put up has been just 
I mean, dude, that's some pretty fresh stuff. It's kind of all over the place. It's really cool because it's way... It's broad. Yeah, Yeah. and it's not the traditional garbage that you see all the time. It's such a fresh perspective. Yeah, we don't take the press kits and just num, 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 and then regurgitate it. No, we put our own own flair on it. Well, it definitely... uh, I've seen, I think, probably pretty much every one of them, and I, and I just think they keep getting better. And no better. way, for I, real? I love them, man. Damn, I, it, Nate. It, okay. It's just, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great way to see a different perspective on things. It's particularly like when you're showing a new town or a new city, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. That it's just refreshing, man. I got, I, I don't even know a better way to say it than that. But Appreciate it. Yeah, it's good. Right on, man. And the work that you guys do is awesome. But you've also done some work for some really cool companies. One of which was Toyota. Yeah, hooked me up with some gear from the little shoots over yeah, there. Uh-huh. Uh, tell me, tell me about how these photo shoots work and how how you got into all that. Gosh, man, saying. how I got into all this is wild. You know, it's just from passion. You know, um, growing up, I might have been about seventeen, eighteen, junior year, senior year of high school, and gosh, I was doing all kinds of weird stuff. I didn't really know myself Roller that blade. much. You know, like <laughs> no, no, it's right at the start of rolling. Yeah. I started, I started way late. I wish I would have known about it, but I was in ping pong club, you know, playing soccer, saxophone. I was actually a very varied person, but skating kind of took over everything. I ended up making skate videos with friends, and um, that's how I got the job now. And so, like, so skating kind of introduced you into what would ultimately be your career with video yeah, production. Yeah, at least at the moment. Yeah, that's what it is. It's it's uh, I owe it a lot to role playing, and then in turn, I owe a lot to my mom for teaching me how to skate at the rink, you know? So yeah. it all started at the skating rink. Right? Yeah, Well, I was going to ask you, okay, so what was your first introduction to skating? And to aggressive? You, well, just, well, I mean, because everybody's got that one moment where they had the rink or something where you put on mm. quad, well, at least some of us old school guys that yeah. were around before inlines came to be. But um, what was your introduction into into the Roland community, the whole Roland scene, all of that? Well, I mean, like I said, my mom, she taught me how to skate inline a long time ago. I just took a shine to it. I always enjoyed just the idea of gliding on the ground. It made me feel like uh, Michael Jackson. I used to watch that Moonwalker movie a lot. Mm. You know the Moonwalker yeah. movie? You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah. I'm Say old school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you know I've been this. been around for yeah. a minute, yeah. I've seen that. Well, but you're kind of yeah. dating yourself. You're starting to sound yeah. old now, and you yeah. talk about that. No, no. I, I used to watch California Raisins and all that. I not am dating. Not a young gun yes. anymore. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, I um, digress. <laughs> but, gosh, first time ever seeing aggressive role, but I was 17, and, what was um, your first exposure? Yo, I had picked up a skateboard from Walmart, and I'm learning how to ollie in the driveway. And then um, from there, I turned on the TV, and I saw a skater. His name is Dominic Sagona. Hmm. His style was crazy. Yeah. You know, he'd wear two different color type skates. He'd have one sleeve on, one sleeve off, doing wicked little 540s over everything. His style was messy, and I loved it. And um, I was like, what is yeah, this? Like always just kind of like yeah. out of control. That yeah, and I was of... like, what is this? It looks like the ultimate form of self-expression. You know, I'm like, yo, this is awesome. So that that's what got me into it for nice. sure. Nice. X Games. Huh. I hate y'all for taking Roll Band out. I know it. I know. Yeah. yeah, but that's a, that's a whole episode whole by itself. A whole other story. But um, I think that's one of the things that's really unique about Roll Band 2 is the diversity of styles. Yeah. yeah, within that community. I noticed it at A-Town Stomp this past year because oh, yeah. I had kind of been out of the scene for quite a while. And Glad you're back. Had, yeah, man, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, I had been itching to get um, for a while to get back into a little bit, but it's been really good to reconnect with a lot of the old guys. I noticed at A-Town Stomp it was so neat to see just how many different styles there were out there. Yeah. Like it wasn't just, okay, there's black guys, white guys, red guys, brown guys, Mm-mm. green guys, whatever, no. but it was like different styles. Different just flow. Just so many different mm-hmm. yeah, ways of rolling and different uh, oh, yeah. you know, ways of looking. <laughs> and it just, man, it just appealed to me so much. But I actually wrote my journal like a good two pages about it the next day. Really? I was just so struck by that. And it just stuck with me. And I don't know if it was... Because of coming from triathlon where you do have that same amount of diversity. Because one of the things I like about triathlon is that it's all shapes and sizes. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not just the big athletic super stacked people out there that are doing no. the, doing those things. Got skinny it's, dudes, you got you skinny, got dudes, skinny got chicks, you know, yeah, like I mean, whatever some it may that be. are just starting that like a weight loss journey kind of thing. Yeah. They're just, you know, they're just barely able to even ride a bike. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. But they're out there doing it, man, and they're out there sweating and they're trying yeah. and they're trying and they're That's getting all it that and matters. it's and it's so inspiring. And then to see it with rollerblading, it's like you get that too, but then you also get that diversity of style, man. Yeah, and just you know, it's not just what you wear; it's their, how you, it's how you grind, their, it's how their, you, their it's how you stride. You know, it's all in the gait, all in the um, yeah. 
in the in the way that you that you roll, you know. Yeah. So that's really really. And it's cool. so just different than you know all these organized sports where you're all kind of made to look the same. You're yeah. wearing a uniform. You're and you know, you know sometimes kinda... they have that winter clash take for example. No, you, there's a real uh, Alex Broskow. There are people out there who will dress exactly verbatim as Alex Broskow or other people like Eugen Einan. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot how to say his last name, but people they dress just like their you know their skating idols yeah. and they will show up in full support. Like team, That's you know, awesome. like and it's That's it's great. very cool to <laughs> so see you that. It's like the Alex Broskow section. Yeah, yeah, they, they have a section, have no look. no doubt, like <laughs> blonde wigs and but all. But yet the whole they're thing. all interacting and they still have that that real community vibe there, which yeah. makes it so cool. It makes mm-hmm. it, well, I think, makes it all roll so well. Yeah, so. and that, I think that may have something to do with reemergence that you're seeing now. Yeah, uh, at least I'm hoping that's what it is because it appeals so much to me. Yeah, I just that that aspect Agreed. of it is just it calls me, and I don't know if that's because I'm nonconformist and don't like. Going with the flow, or whatever. But uh, you still got a little bit man. of angry youth, huh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like being a pain in the neck. I uh, think more. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> but I think some of that comes back to its origins, you know, because blade life was always kind of perceived as that dorky sport a little bit, you know, yeah. like we were spandex and and neon colors, you know, back in the day when it first kind of hit. I think being the dork style to start with gave us that freedom to really express ourselves however we want to. Oh, you know? totally. I mean, and, I, I and there's that, nothing better than that. Absolutely. There's nothing better than, than skating how you want to. Or if you want to skate like somebody else, yeah, sure, do it too. But at the same time, identity is what you make it. Yeah. yeah, and you're out there creating, doing your own thing. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm really excited about both Julian and Kurt with their new companies. And, Wind and wheels, that whole, yeah. That whole lifestyle design mm-hmm. that they're kind of trying to go with. Yeah, and, they picked a cool a lifestyle. Bob Bobby Spassov, they're on the um, the wind wheels. Yeah. Oh, or, yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. Uh huh. Nice. Yeah, yeah. He announced his team the other day on. Yeah. On the and Utah uh, from the, Japan. Yeah. Which calls cool. podcast the Jump Street podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm hyped to see what they come up with. Yeah. Because they're yeah. all really stylish dudes in their own right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's stuff that's kind of been cooking for a while. So hopefully. Yeah. There's some. There's oh, a I'm lot sure of, it'll pop up, no doubt. So, what's been going on with you? We talked about what's going on with the rollerblade community and all the kind of where the sport is at right right now. Uh, full disclosure: you roll for K2 now. Yeah, and have been for what the last year or two. Yeah, two years or, and some change, two man. Two years and some change. Wow. And it's I don't even know kind of how because the, there's so many blast. people out there who deserve the position so much more than me. I'm just. I know it. I know oh, it. Oh, whatever, dude. It's just You've like, got the stilo. I just like, I just love the idea that, you know, they put some boots on my feet. I love the idea that they put boots on my feet. What you know, a blessing, right? Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Especially cool. with, with the industry where it is today now. Yeah, I mean, it's It's exactly. harder than ever mm-hmm. to be able to harder do Harder than ever. <laughs> it's almost all those razors. No. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, th- this industry's been on shaky ground for, oh, for yeah. a little bit, man. For it's sure. been, uh, it's been kind of scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but Hollow um, ground, man. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I think it's coming back around, man. I'm really excited. It is, and it. I think it is because of the recreational market. Absolutely, without question. Over here question. in Atlanta well, on the Beltline, dude, I, I thought, oh, yeah, I'd be the only skater on the Beltline. When I'm out there just doing my fitness kick, you know, uh, I'm seeing skaters out there. all And, and I'm That's seeing wonderful. girl skaters out there, inline, quad, whatever it may be, and it's awesome. I love this so much, what's happening in Atlanta. On well, the and the line. social media community, too. Well, the inline community has really established the social media presence, I oh, guess yeah. I should say. Mm-hmm. They'll um, post I'm, little I'm things like, oh, yeah, we got a 30-mile skate here. We got to well, yeah, do this Well, yeah, the next here. thing you know, you're creating those little senses of community. Yo. And I think that's, man, that's grassroots. That's mm-hmm. how anything gets going, you know. Yep. It's really and, – and if you think aggressives is going to carry this industry, you're crazy. No way. I mean, you no, aggressives is not going to carry it. It's, you it's, have it's to lifestyle have that more than anything. I hate using that word. It is that. It's it's integrating it into your life to where it's almost seamless. Yeah. To where it's almost like, oh, you know, I do this, this, and this, but also I do that. And it's not like well, and I my like life it. life, but it's the way that I choose to get around. You can think of it rather than lifestyle, maybe a lifestyle by design, you know, I mean, yeah. like you're designing a lifestyle that, that you love and that you're passionate about. And mm-hmm. it, whatever that is, I think that you're always on the right track when you're doing that. Yeah. So speaking of what you're passionate about and rolling and all that kind of stuff, where are you at right now? What's going on with you? Where yeah. what, what's the next year look like? Immediate future. Um, yeah, I know you've had a few updates. I don't know if you're willing to share all those or any of those. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple updates that I can share right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm still still doing the video and the editorial and such and the like. I'm really just hyped to get back over to Europe. I got lots of homies. When you um, headed back over there? No, I'm headed back over there next month. Nice. Yeah, I'm be out there for about a month, starting in London. Uh, actually, no, starting 
from here to Boston, gonna go chill with a few skater friends up there for a day, literally one day. Nice. And then go from there to London. I got some family out you, there. Did you just work out to like have an extended layover kind of thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Yep. It's always smart and, when you um, can do that. Oh, dude, it's awesome. It's, uh, it, it's it's all about the planning. Get the planning right on the flight, Tell boy. You, you can you can visit a few places for the same price that yeah. it costs. You know, like that's Clark Howard, Clark Howard, Clark Howard. A T Elliot. Yes, yes. Uh huh. <laughs> Doctor Scrooge. But yeah, go from Boston to London, and in London, um, got family out there. Also, I'm trying to skate a good bit. I got a buddy out there who writes for a, a magazine too, uh, Emma. So we're going to hang out as nice. well. Go from London to Brussels. And I'm going to be right there at the time that Brussels shuts down the entire city from car traffic. And uh, it's the entire city, dude. It's nuts. Nice. So they're going to uh, have like this huge race through the city. They have a couple skate competitions as well. Are they doing um, with the inline marathons or anything like that there? Or any um, I think it's more like races? race. Racing, like it's it's crazy. I've seen the video from last year, and I was like, "This looks nuts." I don't even know. If oh, they, those marathons are full on races. They do yeah. them in like an hour, bro. It's it's Dude, crazy. And in, in, in Belgium, Brussels is just a very hilly city too. So I don't even know how they're gonna do this. I don't know how they did it already. How they have done it, but I'm excited um, to to hang out there for a few days. That's gonna be a blast. Yeah, man. go from there to uh, to Italy. I'm chilling uh Genova, the uh or Genoa, or however you might say it, but it's Genova, the home of yeah. uh pesto pasta. And uh my buddy Laurie, he's Go also on K2. Right yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Buddy Laurie, what's up, Laurie? Um we we are uh he's gonna he's gonna take me in for about four, four or five days. We're gonna be out there skating because he skates Beautiful. for K two as well, so we can get clips. At least try to. You know, Excellent. make it make it a nice time. Do you talk to Mike Powell much? No. Um, mm. I, do, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar. He has a podcast called The Powell Movement. He works over at K2. Really? Out in Seattle. No, no, he's no. One of, he's one of Tom's old school. Really? Back nice. So Great, goes back, goes back, cool, back, super back. cool homie. He actually had, on his podcast, he had um, one of my, he's kind of been, I don't want to say a mentor because I've only reached out to him once, but uh, certainly somebody who has set an example of how I want my podcast to be like. Word. Uh, he did an awesome like interview with Fabiola. De Silva, that was just man, spot on, she's so and dope. then um, <laughs> man, his one with Dave Payne was oh, just, wow. I've listened to it yeah. probably five times, and I don't know if it's just because I'm a dork and like wanting to learn about all the video stuff and all the background that goes all with that. And mm-hmm. Dave Payne to me is just a freaking genius. Right on. Um, that guy, he's got it going on. He's got it figured dope. out, and and he's still working his 4K too, as far as I know. Really? At least I think he does. I'm, See, I, I want to visit. I want to visit HQ, man. Right. You know, Seattle's not far at all. So, well, I tell you, it's on my list. What I've been trying to do is batch these podcasts by yeah. city. Trying to do like what you Little do. Collections. Like a, I found a super cheap flight to Denver. Batched a bunch of interviews, yeah. and bam, I locked it in. And now next week, I'm going to Denver. So I say that to say Seattle yeah. is on and the I'll, list, so I can grab Mike. Seattle's and I've got awesome, a, I've got dude. a couple buddies out there that are just these mountain men, burly of course, you know, lumberjack yeah. types and all mm-hmm. that stuff. If they're not burly lumberjacks, they're hipsters. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Yeah, no, I'm crazy. Not, gonna, not, not hipsters, but no. uh, little yeah, hip eats. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah, old yeah, grunge yeah. crowd or whatever, no. but. My sons did an internship out there, and that's nice. uh, that's some beautiful country, but it's a lot different. Dude, it's a lot different. It's a lot for different, sure. but gorgeous, man. The, mm-hmm. uh, some of the stuff out Love there. Love Seattle. There's a great skate scene out there. That's for sure. How do you get your information? How do you My learn news. as your as your, I mean, not like what's going on in the world, but like how are well, you? I check the news like twenty continually times. Continually like learning and and going. I think about video production and there's so much to learn <laughs> dude there's so much to learn i'm a novice still and i will admit that i'm a so novice in video how are you or what is the process that you go through to continue to better yourself trial and error you know just messing around with settings knowing cool other people people who who are way into it and thrive in what they do for example i got my buddy brandon anderson He's got this thing, his stream media. He works very closely with a bunch of big names, and he's out there doing this and making a living and doing what he loves. Same with uh, my boy AJ, this young cat, and it makes no sense how talented he is right now, but he can, you'll, you'll know his name. You'll know, his, I'll just say that. You will know his name. Yeah. But yeah, it's just people that you know. Be not the smartest person in the room, you know? Like, right. Yeah, if you're the, the dummy, dude. Like, if I'll you're the, the smartest dummy, person no in the room, you're yeah. in the wrong room. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, That's um, fantastic. 
Yeah, that's how I learn. I, well, I that's learn great to hear you say that because that's kind of how I think of you because like oh. I see what you're doing and because I'm like this dude who doesn't know About to any of it. Four by four leading so, the blind on this. So thing. now it's really cool to it's cool to see that you kind of have that same kind of outlook on on how on how you go about trying to learn right on any books that have made an impact on you i know you said you didn't really do much of the podcast but anything that made a lasting impression on you is there a book that you've given away anything that any book in particular that's had an impact well right now i just started but it's uh the hate you give my parents got me that book i'm familiar yeah, yeah it, hit, it hits home just right off the rip kind of so um, yeah I, i'm fresh into it excellent so um yeah that's good now let me ask you this are you doing audiobook or are you actually reading nah, the book book I, I don't reading. do audiobooks well no i never you don't have. do audiobooks well even I with all the ha- travel really no like huh. yeah um that's very surprising to me uh what can i say i'm a visual person hmm. even if it's words on paper yeah but i mean even like because i just think a lot of times like when you don't have wi-fi or you don't have access to where you can oh well, then i'm listening to music whatever. I got playlists on playlists yeah. on playlists for days, months. I, that's good Maybe to hear because, year. quite frankly, you're kind of the exception to the rule compared to most other people that I talk to. Most other hmm. people are on like a 10 to 1 ratio of audiobooks to really to re- regular traditional Man, reading. I'm jamming Just out. Just because of the convenience factor. Oh, okay. Because instead of listening to music, they can download a podcast or a, an audiobook. And, and basically, last... you, can, you can take down a book a day almost if, yeah. you're, if you have Oh, wow. Time. Yeah. I guess um, the, uh, the ingestion speed of, of, of an audiobook is pretty attractive. Yeah. Well, yeah. And especially like uh, some people do it on time and a half. Really? So it's like red? I didn't even know that was a thing. But over the course of an hour, I guess you do get It'll a add pretty up. significant amount of extra right content in. But cool, <laughs> dude! I got to put on slow motion just so <laughs> yeah, I can just so I absorb can absorb it yeah, all and exactly. understand it. That's great. So, what's the future got for you, man? What What's some of the future projects you've got coming up that you're excited about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to just to continue doing this, and and I just want to keep seeing the world man i just want to keep meeting cool different people and making stuff that will be more worthwhile you know doing this stuff right now is great don't get me wrong it's so fun but yeah i want to get to a point to where the product that i'm making the, the deliverable is something that people will take to heart and remember not just because it's new not because it's fancy tell me a little bit more about that because i'm not sure that i fully wrap my head around that I just feel like we live in this like TMZ celebrity driven society. You know, we do what what they're doing or we vie and strive to have and be what they are. That image that that yeah. kind of Yeah, it's like it's so unattainable at that point then why why are we even looking at that? And that's sometimes the the problem that I have even with what I do. Why because am I interviewing you're kind of some promoting of these? that. Exactly. You're kind of promoting it's that like a doctor who smokes pedestal. cigarettes or something like right. that, you know, like Interesting. It's, yeah. So what is your vision of what you want that to look like man you know if i can integrate celebrity status into something that means something yeah tell me more about like what you envision that to look like i want it to be as organic as possible i don't want it to be contrived i want it to be something to where you don't have to have a pr firm behind it where the celebrity actually cares about that purpose and they would have done it if it was recorded or not that's the stuff I that's kind of cool because that's the it's, I know the vein that I'm kind of trying to go down myself as I'm looking at how in the world to try to make a living yeah. at doing these fun things that I enjoy doing and working with companies yeah. and products that you believe in or that you like or that you support. My first thought was, you know, like you just take any advertise. Somebody's going to pay you to be an advertisement on their thing. All right, mm-hmm. great. I, you're going to pay me. Great. I'll take yeah. it. But rather than do that, why not? advertise and promote the products that you love and adore that you're, anyway, that you're going to use that, that, you're, gonna, that you're already using yeah, that and you're that's about kinda, yes yes and as like a conscientious person just forget about like what you're trying to do for a living just as a person who meaning in their life like you should yeah. be we should we should all kind of be doing that just anyway certainly like promoting these things that we believe in promoting these products that we know are good and those are the know? things that are genuinely going to take off not the things that have right. because a social real, media budget right? behind it's, it yeah. that they're boosting numbers and stuff just to make it look cool no it's, it's inherently authentic. cool yes it's authentic exactly yeah i like that movement I've you know i like this a lot about that yeah and it's something that, that crosses a lot of minds of creatives that, that That's are, neat that are to creating hear somebody content. like you that has such a different perspective. Kind yeah, of what can I say? Be thinking along those same lines. That's yeah. really neat. That does kind of roll me into my next question. In a perfect world, 
everything going exactly how you dreamed it would go. All your dreams are coming hmm. true. Everything's coming together yeah. for you. Ten years from now, what's a day in your life look like? My life won't look much different than this, quite honestly. My life is just going to be, uh, Clark Howard posted a sale to Bali, five ninety nine dollars round trip. And I call up my buddies. I call up my girl. I call up my mom and dad and say, hey, y'all want to bounce out? Pack a day bag. We're going. That's not necessarily rich by global standards, but it's comfortable. No, that is rich. Are you kidding? When I say that's rich, I mean that's rich in experience. That's yes, rich in yes. life. That's to me, that's what wealth is. Yeah. It's, that it's not how many zeros in your bank account. It's who it's you're that spending you're the time with, that man. Life. Who cares if you have a hundred million dollars in yeah. the bank if you're miserable? Yeah, exactly. Who cares if you've been successful in business if you can't be in the same room as, with your wife for more than five minutes? Yo, that's nuts, you know the, you don't have any of those personal fulfillment things I mean because that's kind of what my whole journey and a lot of this podcast is about is it's the new rich yeah the old rich of wealth and power happy and, is the new wealthy yeah exactly and, and it's not even just happiness but fulfillment mm -hmm. you know it's Gratitude. finding meaning having some substance to what you're doing it's mm -hmm. not just about that pretty picture that no. you're posting on instagram nope. i think one of the funniest things about social media is the people that post the most have the most dysfunction that they're trying Boy, to cover up that ain't the and, truth. I, and i find it true time and time again even mm -hmm. with myself i yeah, mean same i'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well. not I mean, out the equation like no i'm not insta famous by any means anything like that but a lot of people will no, but see you do have a very what strong social media presence because of your video yeah they see what i'm content. doing they're like oh he's just living a life but they don't understand that I took that photo in between holding, you know, 50, 60 pounds of gear, walking, sweating, and I just happened to have <laughs> yeah. a towel just ready to go, you know, like. That's, and they see the two-hour hike exactly. uphill through the they desert that it, it took to get to, there. to get there, yeah. but they, sometimes people will base off of what they see off an app. And, and it's only dumb. natural. I mean, yeah. it's, it is. It it's is the only curse natural. of social media. It yeah. is what it is. Although you are promoting a brands and, and having to you know kind of put that front just don't I think lose touch That's you're are grounded in a way and i think probably skating has something to do with that of you're course. grounded in a way that's really allows your content to differentiate itself from everybody else yeah the, I skate, think the skating eye is different that's for sure you know like someone question. like chris smith you should interview chris smith slinky yeah interview chris smith nice he he started skate videos now he's making music videos he's making films and movies and all kinds of stuff he's doing much That's more exactly than exactly the guy that i'm yes. looking for chris I'm coming for you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. You know, really, that's, that's really what it's all about. When you can find a lifestyle that, that you can flow with, that fulfills those different buckets that you got to have filled, mm -hmm. you know, you'll never fill those buckets with the party lifestyle. It's all that, that glitz and glamour, that yeah. money, that fame, that fortune, that party drug lifestyle, it sure does look pretty and it looks fun mm -hmm. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But when you get down to it, the when it comes down to all brass tacks, man, yeah. it doesn't cut it. And it no. will never give you that fulfillment through living a fulfilling life. And you know, you do get to have a pretty glamorous lifestyle, but I do think that you are living a very fulfilling lifestyle. I'm trying, well. man. And it shows in your level-headedness. You're cool, calm, and collected, and one of the most no. <laughs> laid-back cats I know, that's for sure. Well, hey, man, really appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully this video stuff works out. I hope so, um, yeah. Well, my video stuff. Oh, we already know your video stuff's working no. out because it's already no, I'm going sure by leaps and bounds. Fine. And continued success. I'm really excited to see the stuff that you guys have coming up. And Damn. Thanks, man. Lot. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate keep you, Keep it man. coming, man. And keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. Any last-minute shout-outs, any plugs, anything you want to... Shoot, Hold it out before we wrap it up, man. Yeah, Anybody you want to talk to? You? Out, I always yeah. give everybody a chance to promote a business, promote a cause, promote a charity, anything like that that you. Man, shout out to anyone who's ever actually sat down and had a conversation like this with me. A real conversation. You nice. are my homie, and I appreciate nice. that. You are too, man. You're my boy. Yeah. Oh, and before we go, speaking of homies, um, we were supposed to bring this up. We were talking about high school and everything, but we kind of got sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to your boy. Rest in peace. Josh Wagner. This know, episode was, dedicated to your boy. Yeah, yeah. Homie. Yeah. Grew up right around, around the corner from me. Must Literally, been. like, I could Big throw you. a rock and probably hit his house. But yeah. A good dude, man. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Um, he's, he's missed miss, to miss this day. Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for your time, man. Appreciate no you. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening. So, what'd you think? What did I miss? Anything that you wanted to hear that I didn't cover? What do you want to know more about? Who would you like to see on the show? Hit us up on social media and tell me what you think. Check us out on iTunes and please leave a review. 
We're now on Patreon, and your support there helps let us know we're headed in the right direction. We have a lot of exciting new things coming, fascinating guests, and some of the craziest stories you won't believe. So stay in the loop and check out more great content by subscribing at our website, 8keystograde.com. Special thanks to my guests and all those of you living an extraordinary life. This is Nate G. We'll see you next week.